There are no pharmaceutical clashes in Nigeria for categories, in part because of the ontological link between humanity and falsehood are uh, an inevitable and perhaps inerasable features of lives as presently constituted. They are, as I show with just one example beginning from the next sentence, essentially a tool of power rather than the product of ignorance. As a Nigerian familiar with the genocidal header system with which Nigerians grapple on a daily basis, you are no doubt conversant with the categories former headers clashes like the category women and children often touted by the apostles of gender studies. These term equidize a linguistically sophisticated suppression of truth. It is a transparently false category, but why it does not exist in reality, it has gained currency and traction through Oses embraced by those the ace columnist Tony Afejuku calls Nigerians decisioners, the powers that be, those who rules us to our permanent discomfort. In an address he presented as a special guest of honor at the Peace, Unity and Security Lecture series aired at ECOWAS Auditorium in Abuja in February this year, Nigerian current Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Malami San, postulated that the sitting of a commission for pastoralism regulated by law could provide a receipt for resolving the protracted Farmayeda conflict in the country. According to him, Sim simply addressing the farmer crisis from purely theoretical perspective often devoid of reality and without synchronization with the needs and aspiration of the involved stakeholders is not only counterproductive but immiscible to the emergence and sustenance of a peaceful and prosperous Nigeria, shown of its rhetorical pretension, Malami's avament is nothing but sheer gog, but it was crafted in the language of Damajoguiri by a um, design. The dictionary before me as I write defines a clash as a short fight between two groups of people by referring to the genocidal onslaught on Nigerian farmers by a band of bloodthirsty psychophants as mere clash Malami like the rest of Nigerians of his sheerdom intent on ethnic supremacy carefully demises the plight of the victims and avoids responsibility for the elders Erodion's activities come to think of it. If in Nigeria farmers and elders are merely clashing, then the proper thing to do, which be seats both sides on a table and iron out their differences through a commission that is. As a trained statistician, I am at least vaguely familiar with the literature on po politicized in conversation talk in english it's usual to try it's usual to try and mitigate face threatening acts because ultimately we want to to be members of a civil community through linguistics mitigation for instance we try to repair the damage done to someone's face by what we say or do consider the following said to a football player by his gaffer that's some chance you lost. I did that during my first match for Juve. Here, the coach tries to mitigate the damage that may be potentially done to the face public image of his player who has just had a scandalous miss his front of goal. But of course, we may choose to perform it in in situational appropriate context as i said in my doctoral dissertation politeness is not called for during a fire outbreak in such situation we scream we 
gesticulate widely not necessarily because we wish to be rude but because we won't perform utterances that are detected by this situation but in the case that i am addressing here what we have is so much more than pol in impoliteness an utterance that threatens the face of an addresses it is a linguistic man manipulation made to reinforce huge money and the theorist lewis atusa would group such deft uses of language as part of the ideological state apparatus that is instrument used by the state to legitimize oppression in such a way that the oppressed might even come to see the oppression as being quite natural. As I write, Nigerian farmers remain at the mercy of Fulani ethnic warlord masquerading as Esme. They rape women before their husbands and daughters before their parents. They kill at will, drink and bathe in the blood of their victims, and conduct the most horrendous robberies on the highways. They display farmers from their ancestral heritage lands that their forebearers farmed hundreds if not thousands of years ago lands that are an inerasable in features of the identity the lands are not just a spot of ground they are the site of history of culture and identity in short a site of life in chinua achebe things fall apart the character Okonkwa was confronted with the kind of situation faced by Nigerian farmers today. Hear him. Let us not reason like cowards. If a man comes into my hut and defecates on the floor, what do I do? Do I shut my eyes? No. I take a stick and break his head. That is what a man does. These people are daily pouring feet over us and Okeke says we should pretend not to see. The political OKKs are still here speaking of farmers' headers clashes instead of murderous genocidal attacks on farmers. The intent is clear the cripple the ability of the victims to fight back. It's all because hegemony folks. <laughs> if you hear what this man is saying and you understand properly what he's saying, you will know that he's speaking the truth. It is only in Nigeria that you beat a child and you ask the child not to cry. This Nigerian government are really, really something else. Don't mind the deceivers. The victims know exactly what is happening. Whether the political OKKs we hear and change their tone from house slaves to comrade in army against the Sahelians overlords, it does not really matter. This evil and jihadist jihad on Christians is bad. Well, well thought out well written and very well presented only that the write-up seems to be too elitist in nature the non too educated can hardly understand the content and context of the message you have accurately furnished with all thanks all the same for these grandiose thoughts <laughs> just added your own as well well you can go to the comment section and share the on this article thanks for listening